We're just beginning this morning, just having a time of quiet and lifting people known to us who are in need of prayer. Just in the quiet of the morning before we begin. morning. Welcome to our service this morning. We come gathered together sharing this morning um, as we are on the second day of Holy Week and for many of us this illness is starting to um, affect people that we know and at St Albans and St John's we've been praying for people by name and we'll be doing that later on. We're going to be focusing this morning on um, the third station from the book that we're using, Walking the Way of the Cross, and it's Jesus condemned by the Sanhedrin, by the priests and the rabbis who he admired in some ways through their teaching but he warns us in Matthew's Gospel not to do as they do, but to do as they say. So let's begin as we're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, If, you, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near. Through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue together. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Our Bible reading this morning is taken from Mark's Gospel again, chapter 14, Verses 55 to 64. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus 
to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against, the, against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of Man, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need more witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. This is the word of the Lord. As I said earlier, in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 23, the teachers and the law and the Pharisees are spoken about by Jesus. And Jesus is very clear that people should stop looking at what they're doing and following that, but listen to their teaching. Basically, they were saying the right thing, but doing the wrong thing. And this here are those same teachers of the law. These are the rabbis who now make up the Sanhedrin that is judging Jesus. Frederick Nietzsche is quoted as saying, I'm not, upset. I'm not upset that you lied to me. I'm upset that from now on, I can't believe you. Philip North in, in the book says, nothing as corrosive of human relationship as lying. We can handle mistakes, ineptitude, naivety, laziness, gross stupidity as long as they're done honestly. And here we find Jesus surrounded by lies. The council of the Sanhedrin is stuffed full of people, set up to give a false testimony. And their lies are so stupid and ill-prepared that they even contradict each other. They haven't got their act together and compared stories. But Jesus stands as the truth, just then as he does now. When he's asked, are you the Messiah? He uses the words, I am. It's, not, it's much more than just, yes, that's me. It's the I am of the Old Testament. It is Jesus saying, I am God. That is me. And here he is speaking the truth. He is the truth in the midst of all the courtroom of lying, in the midst of all that's going on. Jesus stands as the truth. And he stands with us in this world that we live in of fake news and lies telling the truth and that is what we as Christians have to hang on to that the truth the, the 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 only truth can be found in Jesus 
And so as we continue our journey through Holy Week, we hang on to that truth, knowing that no matter what else happens, I am is with us. God is with us. Standing right next to us. Not leaving us. Not letting us get on on our own. But supporting and caring. And that's why we know that we can lift all our prayers to him. And all our thoughts and all our ang anger and all our frustration. Because he is the truth. Amen. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, you were the victim of religious bigotry. Be with those who are persecuted by small-minded small authority. You face the condemnation of fearful hearts. Deepen the understanding of those who shut themselves off from the experience and wisdom of others. To you, Jesus, unjustly judged victim, be honour and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A prayer for the nations. God of hope, in these times of change, unite our nation. Guide our leaders with your wisdom. Lord, we pray for our leaders. We pray for Boris as he receives medical intervention and we pray for all who are stepping up as leaders. Give us and them courage to overcome fear. To lead us through this. So that all may know the truth. I am. Amen. And then those who have been asked to pray for by name. June. Jeff, Zoe, Bill, Rowan, Kate, Katie, Susan and Jamie. And if anybody needs us or would like us to pray for them, then of course we will. There are others who've asked me to pray and of course they're assured of my prayers. We join all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We say together the words, Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal. Have mercy on us. Amen.